Hey guys, it is Mike with Become the Night, and welcome back to Five Days, Five of the Best Opeth Songs According to an Extremely Biased Fan. That last video was massive, so I'm going to try and not have it be as long from here on out. We'll most likely be picking up the guitar a little less today. Speaking of which, today we dive into the massive, enormous, just straight big dick energy, Air Apparent. This song is the second track on Watershed, arguably the best produced Opeth record ever. And I guess another reason why I won't be picking up the guitar as much in this video is because I don't think the composition is the most important element on this one. But we'll touch on that in a moment. YouTube is still suppressing certain videos of mine. Apparently they only want you to watch me if I'm talking about pop stars. By clicking that bell and enabling all notifications, you would be doing me a massive favor. And like all other videos in this series, if you comment in the first 30 minutes of the publishing, I guarantee you a reply. Let's get into it. Y'all ain't ready for this, man. Here we go. Oh! Just right out the bat, gross. Again, doing that four tritone harmony in there with just this massive sample of some type of explosion or like metal impact, just right out the gate. Just listen to that again. Oh, it's gross! It's fucking disgusting! Oh, it's so good. Just immediately let the audience know, hey, by the way, you're about to be pissed. Little push on there. Ah. Introducing the theme, the... Fucking awesome guitar tone. Everything is so well separated on this mix. This is part of what makes it so huge. This is just like because of the tritone and some of the other half step relationships, is just very uh, stereotypical on the nose. We are evil people doing evil things. <laughs> I am me, monster. I will eat you up. Then drops out to just the piano in octaves. Doing the same theme we established. You off again! Fucking gross! Okay, that's a perfectly fine riff, and I think more than anything, it's the harmony implied by the riff that really sells it more than the melody itself. But what really totally sells this is the timbre and the rhythm where they're choosing to do the palm mute chugs on E and where they're choosing to add the explosions of emphasis. That with the beautifully produced guitar, drum, bass tone, and also where he's placing the, you know, fucking the big growls is just, oh, so satisfying. Listen to this shit. There's a little phaser on there too. Panning, coming in from the left and then from the right. This whole section is basically just supposed to be some type of crunchy modal counterpoint to, I, I use the term counterpoint artistically, not musically, to the fucking ugly, gross riff that we just came from. Then using that rhythm from the original riff to transition back into the original riff from that just massive gross nut. Yeah!
This is the section where the fucking Death Clock fans having their fucking faces melted and a demon pops up from the inside of the earth and is just fucking devouring them. That fucking uh, fun little descending harmony guitar line that kind of adds that little accent of just this fucking horror. Oh, it's so good. And then just slamming the shit out of that fucking bell on that ride. Fuck you! The riffs in this song are not like beautifully written melodies. They're not smart in the voice leading context. They're smart in how they hit harmony in a certain respect, but also how they inform rhythm. And that's what I think is so interesting about this. This is a lot less about melody, and it's a lot more about fucking <laughs> And they still keep it really smart and very effective. This is about melody. Beautiful solo. Frederick Atkinson's public debut with Opeth. Oh. Fucking sick, nasty touch. Insane bends. Beautifully dialed in guitar tone. Great vibrato. I like. I I wouldn't change a damn thing. I think it perfectly complements what they did. It's just fucking gnarly, but it doesn't sacrifice any of the feel or emotiveness for just being like, I'm gonna fucking shit notes because metal's fast and uh, and big penis. Trying to give it some fucking soul and some life, some humanity in such a monstrous, evil way. It's so good. Mm. Mm, look at these eyebrows, motherfucker. Yeah, that's the stanky face. And then, you know, like all Opeth from this era, devolves down into beautiful acoustic bits with flutes or sometimes Mellotron. Still hitting that, that fucking tritone up there in the upper register of the guitars. Opeth Thrash, motherfucker! Oh! Coming out of this just like, like very narrow horse blinders. Then let loose with this massive brana, with the keyboards, with the guitars, like multiple layers of guitars. Just go brana, it is so massive. Mm. It adds such emphasis to just let that tightness, that impact, that drive just explode. It's more than released, it's explode, dude. Okay, why the fuck did we randomly just go there? While I agree that rhythmically and harmonically, they did a great job with this one as far as pacing, too, there, it, it feels a little long. I love this song. But fuck, it could definitely be trimmed up. It's a, it's a little meandering. It's a, it's a hair meandering at, at multiple moments. There was a moment I skipped over back here before that thrash section that felt a little like, you're just kind of throwing this in, right? It's not terrible to listen to. I just, I don't know how to properly contextualize it and put it together as a whole thought. Maybe the lyrics are supposed to inform this, the story, the fucking ever untouchable sacred story that everyone loves to use as a defense for poorly written music. Either way, yeah. This particular section, I, I could I could live without. It's a nice part. I just don't need it in this song. It's a fine guitar lead over top of it, but I also just like, eh. Again, if you chop out that whole whole bit, that whole acoustic bit, and just go to the that whole lick there, and then just have it explode back, I'd, I'd be more cool with that, frankly. Just this. Just have that. Save, save us like a minute of our time. Back to the thrash riff. Great. 
great release. Releasing onto the major third there. Except for like an octave or two higher there. That feels good, especially with the tone that they have dialed in and how we're holding down that E. Awesome release out of that thrash section. It feels so satisfying. And then weird quirky organ, I'll take it. This to me, hint. This section right here between the drum part, the phrasing on the guitar, how part of that bottom of the guitar falls out a little bit. And that really points to what would come in the following albums of Opeth in the prog rock era. Without us realizing it, that was kind of a signal of it, I think. We shore up with the drum part. We shore up from this crazy symbol filled wackiness into just mm, mm, pa, mm, mm, pa, just like the dumbest dumbed down drum beat just to say beat you in the fucking face. I do love me some Morgan. It's just pissed. It's just jam-packed with color, fucking color, texture. Those knobs, if they were a such thing as knobs, just dial them up from 11 to 50. Okay. The song should end there. It would be a great ending. For some reason, they tack on another ending for no fucking reason. Now, granted, I fucking love the way this ending sounds. But my critic brain, even though I love the way it sounds, says, In what fucking planet does this have to do with anything we just listened to? <laughs> it is random as fuck. It's amazing and it sounds awesome. And it has so much lament like we get from this era of Opeth. But also it's just like, guys. <laughs> Let's listen to it. Light Mellotron. Mm. In contrast to the rest of the song, this part focuses on harmony, voice leading, timbre, but very much the melody. That very fucking simple melody going on there. That is the, the big emotion seller right there. It's a more um, restrained timbre that's more focused. Whereas everything else is just very fucking loud, and, but not oversaturated to the point where you can't pick out the individual harmony of the notes. Bass Dune runs. And it just does this forever on a fade out. Now, I personally love just being in that moment on repeat. Those are my favorite Opeth moments when they do shit like that. And you're just like, oh, oh, I feel your pain. I feel your anguish. But also coming from my critic brain, again, even though I love it, I acknowledge it has zero fucking musical relationship to anything. Like, no related key. <laughs> they just tacked it the fuck on for whatever reason. The, the story! Again, I don't hate it. As a matter of fact, I love it. I truly do. But I also acknowledge from a, from a critic-oriented brain, there's something off about it, and I don't understand why the fuck they put it on there. Yeah, obviously it's a plus sign for me. It's so pissed. Even, even with the things that I think are faults of it, the positives so overshadow. This song is so incredibly 
massive, it leaves you with wanting more. It feels like the ending of that song could be the ending of the album, frankly. That would be so gorgeous. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you think I earned it, I would love if you click that bell and make sure all notifications are enabled. That would mean the world to me. You can support me on Subscribestar. Link to that is in the description down below. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Become the Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on.